now we are going to have a look at, at, at fluvial landforms. Now, um, of course, uh, we, we, we cannot do all the landforms, but we are going to try to, to do the, uh, the most of them. Um, I am especially going to have a look at, at, at meanders uh, and waterfalls, uh, because those are your, your, your um, popular questions. Now, if you ever look at your fluvial landforms, people, um, these are ones that you must know. You must know how Oxbow lakes are formed, and why are we coming to that? Uh, here's your flood plain, here's our meander again, here's the braided stream, delta. You must know all of these things. But what's very important, people, is that they can ask you in, 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 the, uh, uh, in the exams, what are flat floodplains? Floodplains are found in the lower course of the river, and they are flat and immediately next to or adjacent to the river. See that you are in the position of answering that question. What is a... A, a, a fluvial floodplain. Okay, now, people, the first thing that I'm going to have a look at will be waterfalls. Now, it's very important that you must know how waterfalls are formed and what happens when you have a waterfall. Now, you, you must remember that your key when it comes to waterfall is harder rock and softer, less resistant rock. Remember this rock. These ones that are darker ones that I've indicated here. These are very hard. In other words, they are much more resistant. And these ones, the lighter colored ones, that are the softer rocks. They are less resistant. Very, very important that you must know that. Now, okay. Now, what happens is actually the form of a waterfall is that it, uh, water comes and actually it, it falls. That's why they're calling it a waterfall over the harder rock, right? Because the softer rock, what happens is it erodes away much faster. What well, the result is that uh, you get this water, it comes up to your hard rock, and it falls actually over the hard rock. And then, of course, we've got your rapids. People just have a look. In, in, uh, some people call actually a rapid small waterfalls. And if you look at this photo here, and you look at this, um, well, they're perhaps they're not very wrong when it comes to that. So, so what happens here, exactly the same at your rapids, uh, the water flows over harder and softer, softer, uh, uh, softer rock, and you've got, what kind of flow is that? Of course, your turbulent flow that we've got here. Now, people, we're going to have a look at waterfalls now, simply because waterfalls is, is very, uh, are very important. Now, as I've said, when we study, wa study waterfalls, uh, people, there are two key things that you must remember. The first thing that you must remember is your harder and your softer rocks. Have you got that? What you've got that, you've got your harder rock on top, and because the softer rock gets eroded much, much quicker, the water comes and it falls over the harder rock. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing that you must remember is that waterfalls are not static. They move all the time. And the way they move is, is that they move back upstream. They retreat upstream. Now, if you remember that one that we did when we did the gr uh, uh, ungraded profile, one of the ways in which a profile can change from, a graded, uh, from an ungraded to a graded profile is waterfalls that move upstream. Now, I'm going to show you a video clip now, and I want you to, 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 to definitely have a look and take note of the following. Firstly, the hard rock and the soft rock, and secondly, how a water fall actually moves upstream. Let's have a look at this. So we've got windstone, but very important, there's a second rock at high force. And it's the difference in hardness that's crucial in understanding how the waterfall came about. In this cross section, the windstone is the darker layer of rock on top. It's so hard that the river can't wear it away. The lighter layer of rock underneath is the softer one that I've just smashed with the hammer. It gets slowly worn away by the water swirling at the base of the falls. It's pretty obvious what's going to happen. And this simple process will of course happen again and again. The end result is that the waterfall actually moves upstream from the spot where it started. As it does so, another landform is created. A gash in the landscape with very steep sides and a river at the bottom. A gorge. And a gorge is exactly what lies immediately downstream from the waterfall at high force.
Okay, so uh, matrix very important. I hope that you've uh, that you've that you've caught that on the on the on the on the uh, video clip that we sh shown you. Firstly, the harder and the softer, and secondly, how the waterfall actually moves upstream. Very important that you had to look at that. Okay, so this concludes our waterfalls. Uh, the next one uh, 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 land landform that I would like to have a look at. Uh, meanders and, and oxbow lakes. Now, now as I, I have uh, gone through the lesson this afternoon, uh, many people asked me uh, what are meanders, what are oxbow lakes. Uh, okay, here we are now with your answers. Now, people have a look at this photo. Beautiful photo. Here we've got our river flowing here, and there, here we've got our meanders forming here. Meanders are river bends. Please remember that. River bends, not. But when we've got the river bending like that, it does not stay like that all the time. There are certain things that happen. And this is what you must know, people. You must see the relationship between meanders and oxbow lakes. You must know that. If you don't know how meanders work, you will never understand how an oxbow lake is formed. So let's have a look at this and see if we can see how oxbow lakes actually form from out of your meanders. In flat areas, rivers wander about, forming loops of all shapes and sizes on the valley floor. These are known as meanders. Although they all look different from above, they share the same common features. As you can see, on the outside of the bend, where the water's moving faster, it's cutting into the landscape, forming that long cliff. But here, on the inside of the bend, where the water's moving much slower, all this stuff is being deposited. The erosion has left a very small neck on the meander. If we strip the trees away and look at it from above, it's easy to see what will happen next. The fast-moving stream will continue to erode the banks on the outside of the bends. It also erodes the area around the meander's neck. Eventually, the river breaks through cutting off the meander and forming an oxbow lake. Okay, people, but, but when you know, if you know how these things occur, it's very important that you must also have a look at your topographic map. Now, this river running here, this is the Burger River flowing here. Now, see what happens now. The first thing that I'm showing you is that that is the direction. Now, here we've got the meander, the river bend, and here we've got one. But have a look at the difference between the two. And this is very important. Now, what happens here, people, is that here we get the erosion. And as this, the, the bends are eroded towards each other, the neck becomes narrower and narrower and narrower. And eventually, the river cuts through the neck. This river, one of these days, within a few hundred thousand years, this river is going to cut through here at the bottom also and run straight through the neck there, as is happening here. And what happens then, people, is that you get that your uh, uh, depo depo deposition actually takes place and then your oxbow lake is actually formed. So those are your oxbow lakes that you've got there. Now, people, what you also must know is what happens uh, with a cross profile around a bend. Now, let's see. Uh, we've, we've, we remember, we're busy with meanders. Here's the river flowing now. Here we've got faster flow and here we've got slower flow. See what's happened. Remember when you get faster flow, you always get erosion. Slower flow, deposition. Have a look at that. Erosion there and deposition. You can see, look at the amount of stones there and the amount of material on this side. Immediately you can see the difference. And what's happening there, that is called the undercut and this is called the slip off, uh, slope of the two. And if I should draw uh, a cross section from X to Y, then this is what it would look like. Okay? Have a look at this. Here we've got the deposition that takes place there. Here we've got erosion that takes place here. And this is the undercut slope on the side. And we've got the, uh, uh, um, the undercut and the slip off, slip off slope on, on, on this side. So this happens actually, it's very easy. So let's At just have a look. At the of erosion on the outside bend, a steep river cliff is created. The water piles up on the outside bend due to centrifugal force. A bottom current is set up in a corkscrew motion which deposits the eroded material on the inner bank forming a slip-off slope. 